Welcome to the Fast 3D Explosions introduction video. This video will describe the capabilities of the new Fast 3D Explosions extension. If you want to learn more, please contact us at software at dnvgl.com or find our contact details at dnvgl.com forward slash software. So let's have a look at what Fast 3D Explosions can do. We'll do this by first looking at what standard Fast can do, and then looking at the differences of how Fast 3D Explosions conducts its calculations and provides you with results. So let's take a look at Fast standard explosion modeling capabilities. You first begin by describing your containment vessel and your failure scenario. So material gets out into the atmosphere, Fast will work out what the flammable mass is within the upper and lower concentration flammability limits. Then Fast uses a regular distance step interval to perform ignition of that flammable mass. The default distance is 10 meters. So ignition occurs and the blast area is determined. This continues as the cloud continues to disperse through the atmosphere. You'll get ignition again at the next distance step as if the previous ignition had not happened. So these are parallel outcomes. Another blast zone will be determined and then this process continues until you have an array of potential explosion scenarios. FAST can perform this explosion modeling with the TNT, the TNO multi-energy and the baker strelo explosion models. The modeling relies on there being a flammable cloud pre present and an assumed ignition distance interval. And then the primary result outputted will be the worst case explosion. The worst case explosion is defined as the maximum distance reached by one of your explosion overpressure levels of interest. So you can define a range of different overpressure levels of interest and it might be that some of the bigger blasts only occur further upwind where you have larger flammable mass concentrations and some of the smaller blast overpressure levels of interest occur later on further down through the cloud's dispersion when much of the mass has dropped into lower levels of um, flammable limits. So FAST is a process hazard analysis software tool and it's showing you all of the possible outcomes that could occur based on the phenomenon that are occurring. And it is behind the scenes using event trees. So if we, if we think in terms of event trees, this is how FAST behaves. So you have your loss of containment scenario, your event, and then you, you'll get immediate ignition and delayed ignition. If you have immediate ignition from, for example, a continuous release with no rain out, you can get jet fires. And if it's a short release fraction, you may get a fireball. But we're interested here in delayed explosions where a flammable gas cloud drifts off into your site to find an ignition source. If that occurs, then you get delayed ignition and a flash fire and an explosion is assumed. As this is a consequence modeling tool, then all of the outcomes are assumed with no probability of whether they occur or not. So with delayed ignition, at the 10 meter distance step, you'll experience a flash fire and a delayed explosion. But there's also no ignition as well. So if we think about that through the cascade of the delayed ignition branch of this event tree, then the same occurrence will occur again at the next 10 meter interval where we'll get flash fire, explosion, and also no ignition. And that occurs again at the next 10 meter time step, etc. So just iterating again, we're thinking just really in terms of consequence. So there's no likelihood these aren't risk calculations. So fast results are nice and straightforward. If there's flammable mass, you'll get explosion results. Let's have a look at that in FAST 7.1. So here we have a fairly standard study. There's a propane vessel in the center of the map. It's a pressure vessel containing propane at 20 degrees C and just over seven bar. From the top of the tank, we have a 10 millimeter vapor leak. On the bottom of the tank, we have a 100 millimeter liquid line rupture. So let's look at the consequence results to see what FAST can tell us about these explosions. 
So for the 10mm vapour leak, if I look at the graphs first for the what I consider to be the worst weather conditions, 1.5F stability, you can see from the side view I have a horizontal release that touches the ground about 9 metres downwind at half the lower flammable limit. If I look at the GIS view, by clicking that button there for the same weather condition, the initial view will show me the dispersion footprint. So I'll expect to see the cloud touching down around 8 to 9 metres away from the vessel, with by default the wind blowing from the north towards the south. So at 10 metres away I would get ignition of this cloud. And if I go to the animation tab and I could click through the timeline step by step, I could see all of the different clouds which could give rise to explosions. Now, going to the consequence tab, I can see the actual explosion results, so the late explosion worst case radii. And there they are. So this is showing me an explosion. So this is when my three overpressure levels of interest, you can see them here in the legend, 0 0.2, 0 0.13, 0 0.02 bar. So when those three over, overpressure levels of interest reach the greatest distance, and it looks to me like they're all occurring from a single ignition location, so one of the 10 meter time steps. So the map view is giving me the worst case explosion result. I can go to the reports and view the late explosion report and see each of the explosion results calculated for ignition at each of the 10 meter intervals. So here's the late explosion report. If I just go to view, full window, scroll down a little, you can see at 10, 20, 30 meters, what level of overpressure and um, of interest and the calculated corresponding blast effect distance is for each overpressure level. The flammable mass involved in the explosion at each of those ignition locations. So what FAST can tell me, if I go back to the GIS view and look at the consequence ribbon, look at the shape and effect zone, it shows me the complete hazard zone with which I might expect to see, for example, 0 0.02 bar overpressure. The thinner line circle is an individual explosion. The thicker line circle is where that blast overpressure level could be experienced given the release being in any of the assumed wind directions. So the main point being, just to reiterate, if there's flammable mass, then you will experience an explosion. So let's now look at what the new fast 3D explosions module can do. So the fast 3D explosions module works in the following way. We begin with our release. The release occurs with the wind direction and the cloud drifts downwind. The main difference is that we describe obstructed regions on our map in three dimensions. So they have a width, a length and an upper and lower elevation. What would occur is at time step one, we have a cloud that is not overlapping with an obstructed region. So at this point, if we experienced ignition, we would experience only a flash fire. Looking at step two, the cloud has continued to drift with the wind in the wind direction, and we now have some overlap of the obstructed region. From the flammable mass involved in this overlapped three-dimensional region, we would experience an explosion. So moving down that cascading delayed ignition branch set of the event tree, we move on to the next outcome, as if this explosion never occurred. At this next time step, you may experience complete overlap of the three-dimensional obstructed region and your flammable cloud. In this case, the flammable mass involved in the explosion is large, and you experience large blast overpressure zones, perhaps even impacting some receptor of interest. And this process continues throughout the life of the cloud as it disperses downwind and through the delayed ignition cascade. So we have further explosions, perhaps with less overlap, until eventually there's no overlap at all. And all we experience in these later distances are flash fires. So the important fact, factor here is that there needs to be flammable mass and an obstructed region to give rise to explosion results. So let's take a look at that setup in fast 3D explosions. So I'm closing some of these results down. You can see on the GIS input map, 
in addition to our raster image in the background and our propane release location identified by the green dot on the map, we also have these pink obstructed regions which were previously not used by the standard fast explosion modelling. So the idea is that as dispersion occurs from the release point in a certain wind direction, you may experience interaction with the obstructed region. There may be other wind directions where no interaction occurs and you don't get explosion results. So let's look at the extent to which we might expect explosion results from the 4 inch liquid line rupture. So I open the GIS view for one of the weather conditions. The initial view will be the concentration footprint when wind is blowing from the north. So here you can see the two concentration levels. If I go to the consequence tab of the ribbon, I can look at the cloud footprint or I can look at the maximum concentration footprint. If I look at the maximum concentration footprint, you can see everywhere that the cloud may be during its entire dispersing life. But of course, we, we need to think in terms of time steps because the cloud isn't in all of these locations at the same time. So really, we need to look at an array of cloud footprints using the animation view. So we generate the dynamic display, and then from the beginning, we can click through one time step at a time, like this, to determine how much flammable mass may be involved at any one of those time steps. And it's important to remember that the only flammable mass that will be involved in the explosion is that which it is overlapping between the obstructed region and the cloud. We can get a nice overview of what will be calculated by looking at the maximum concentration footprint by the shape and effect zone. So there you can see the entire zone where concentration will exist given any wind direction. But this doesn't actually tell us the explosion results yet. So Let's take a moment to just look at the calculation of blast overpressures. If I go to the map tab, you can see that these, these pink obstructed regions are defined by different types of obstructions. We have the TNO multi-energy obstructions and Baker Strelow tank obstructions. And amongst the multi-energy obstruction set, you can see that I can insert defined strength obstructions or calculated strength obstructions. And the same is true of BST obstruction types. There are defined flame speed obstructions and calculated flame speed obstructions. Let's just head back to the slides to get an overview of what that means. So how strong are the blasts? The TNO multi-energy method assumes a hemispherical blast wave with central ignition with pressure decay as we move away from the source. So there is a peak over pressure and then pressure decay with the positive x-axis. Now the peak over pressure is determined from one of 10 blast strengths, ranging from blast strength one to blast strength 10. And these correlations give us some indication of the scaled peak side on over pressure versus combustion energy scaled distance. So what is the peak blast strength and how does it decay as we move away from the centre of the explosion? And a similar method exists for determining the pulse duration of the blasts. Now following development of these useful correlations, there was some guidance written for the application of this multi-energy model. So the game formulation, the guidance for the application of the multi-energy model, give rise to these correlations to help us determine what is the initial peak side on overpressure. So the governing factors in working out the peak side on overpressure, first of all, is whether there is confinement to 2D expansion or 3D expansion. So is there a, some kind of ceiling to the expansion of the blast wave? And then within each of these correlations, we have several coefficients. So there's the volume blockage ratio. So telling us how much empty space is there within this congested volume. There's the flame length, so what distance, over what distance can the flame accelerate? There's the characteristic diameter of the objects within the obstructed region, and then there's a material dependent laminar burning velocity. And it's these game formulations which are used within FAST. So here under the multi-energy obstruction set, I have examples of 
defined strength obstructions and a calculated strength obstruction. So unit 1 is one of the pink objects on the map. If I double click to open it up, you can see that it's been assigned curve number 7 and a blockage ratio of 0 0.02. So the user has specified that one of the obstructed regions has a known peak overpressure that will arise. Alternatively, you can use the game correlations. So here in unit 4, if I double click, you can see the inputs for those correlations can be chosen and specified. So the degree of expansion is 2D or 3D. You specify the VBR, the volume blockage ratio, the obstruction type, so the typical diameter or surface area sum value. And then based on the size and shape of the geometry that you specified, you can have a flame path length calculated or you can define it yourself. And then from the material properties of the material that's dispersing through this obstructed region, the laminar burning speed will be determined. Combined with a geometrical description of the obstructed region, so the rectangle has been drawn on the map and then given an upper and a lower elevation, the flammable mass involved in the explosion and the peak overpressure will be determined. And from there, the TNO multi-energy curves will be used to determine the pressure decay as the explosion pressure wave expands and decays away from the ignition source. A very similar methodology is used if you're to use baker strail tang explosions. So baker strail tang use an array of curves relating to the Mach number, the flame speed of the burning flame front in this explosion for the peak overpressure and also the impulse. And a table can be used for determining the flame speed where we use fairly similar inputs. So there's degree of confinement, so 2D, 2.5D or 3D, a material reactivity and a degree of congestion. Quite similar to the multi-energy method in that way. So let's take a moment to look at how those calculations are performed. We start off by defining our failure scenarios and defining the obstructed regions. So we specify their location and geometry and the congestion and confinement properties. These inputs might be placed on a map so that we can look at the results relative to some objective interest, for example. So what happens next? We take FAST's dispersion results and we allow the model to look at the three-dimensional overlap between the dispersing cloud and its flammable concentration and its flammable mass and the three-dimensional obstructed region that has been specified. And based on the concentration and the flammable mass available and the degree of confinement and congestion, we will obtain a set of explosion results. And we must bear in mind that there are a large number of these results for every direction and every time step of the cloud. And if we consider that there may be several sources of release, several vessels, and for each vessel potentially a range of scenarios, this builds up into a large complex set of outcomes that are spatially located. So let's have a look at that in FAST with the 3D Explosions extension available. So I know how I have the extension available because of the presence of this 3D Explosions icon down here on the status bar of FAST. So to obtain explosion results I need to do two things. First of all I need to switch to Effects mode. So in addition to the traditional discharge calculations and the full discharge, dispersion, flammable and toxic consequence calculations, I have an additional effect calculation mode. Now, to obtain explosion results, I first need to request an output level. So I go to this new effects tab in the workspace tree, and there are a number of different types of effect levels that I can obtain. So I can right click and insert an effect level of interest. I can obtain overpressure effects, impulse, but I can also, in addition to this explosion modelling, see contours for jet fire radiation, pool fire and fireball radiation. 
You can also see contours of flash fire envelopes and indoor and outdoor toxic lethalities. In this example, we'll look for an overpressure level to 0.1 bar. So I insert an overpressure effect level of interest. I'm going to use side on overpressure, but the TNO multi energy method also allows me to obtain dynamic and side on and dynamic. The overpressure level of interest I'll enter as 0.1 bar, and that's it. Click OK. I can insert any number of these effect levels of interest. So I'll first rename this effect level 0.1 bar side on overpressure. and insert a second overpressure effect level of interest, again for side on, at 0.3 bar overpressure level of interest. And also name that 0.3 bar side on overpressure. Going back to the models tab, choosing the study level, in effects mode, I can now click run. FAST will now perform the calculations of dispersion from these two release scenarios and then looking at the cloud rotated through steps through the windrows and at different time steps through the cloud's duration it will look at the wide array of explosions that could happen when those clouds and their time steps interact with these obstructed regions. I can see that the calculations are complete as indicated by the green ticks. So with the study level chosen, looking at the results area of the ribbon, you can see I have this new effects result type. I can see effect contours for a single effect level of interest for multiple studies. Or for a single study, I can view multiple effect levels. Now, I'm going to choose the second option because as you can see, we're, mul we're interested in multiple effect levels of interest, 0.1 bar and 0.3 bar. And we're going to look at those contours individually. So when I click OK, the GIS results view will open, showing me those contoured effects. Here you can see that the blue contour represents the area in which you would experience 0.1 bar overpressure or higher. And the green region is the area in which you, would ex you may experience 0.3 bar overpressure or higher. So you can see the benefit, benefit of this being that the explosions can only occur when you have flammable mass and an obstructed region, as opposed to the standard indiscriminate approach where only flammable mass is necessary to give rise to an explosion of a predefined strength. If we need to investigate certain directions of interest, then we can go to the weather tab and in the weather folder, double clicking the folder itself opens up the weather direction dialog box. Now for those users of Safeti Fast Risk, you know that the, the Windrose information normally has a probability that can be specified in here. But instead of um, there being a probability and likelihood based approach to this, we simply have a Boolean yes or no. So do we want to consider that weather direction? You can have between four and 18 different weather directions. And using the tick boxes, you can isolate particular weather directions. So if I wanted to look at only wind from the north, from this particular angular segment, then I can deselect the other directions. Click OK. I get a warning that that will discard my results, which is fine. Close down that particular results view. Recalculate in effect mode. And then with the study selected, if I view the single study multiple effects view again, for my two overpressure levels of interest, I will see explosions that occur if only the wind blows from the north into these particular obstructed regions. So this allows me to drill down and look at particular explosions of interest. And this functionality will be extended further into the future to include hazard ranking points and also explosion details tables, giving you elaborate detail on all of the individual explosions that have occurred.